What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Dark Waters, and I'm going to be really, really brief. For the new people who are just starting to dip their toes in the dark waters or you're just kind of treading water with your floaties on your arms, I have my own personal website. It is IamDarkWaters.com. Membership, $4.99 a month. Why do I do that? Because I don't believe in building up YouTube's platform and then giving them the ability to censor me or deplatform me, which is what, or demonetize me, which is what they've done multiple times due to random bullshit. So, if you're new to the family and you want to hear more content, go to imdartwaters.com and become a member. Um, those of you who've been on YouTube and follow me for a while, you know and you realize that you're getting more content on YouTube than you've ever gotten, so you're welcome. But for those of you who want to swim deeper in the dark waters, head on over to imdartwaters.com. For those of you who message me and email me all the stories, true, yes, they are. Um, for those of you who want to know about the Roger and Steve stories, are they true? There's more information available now f about those people and those stories that you can Google than ever. So all you got to do is do your own research. Don't sit here and ask me, is this real? Blah, blah, blah. No. Turn a VPN on. Search the Internet from Belize or from China or from Russia or from India. Start typing names in and you'll find them. Period. Holla at your boy. It's Dark Waters. Let's get down to business. traumatic when you were a kid you got to give up your existing friends find new friends it's a whole bunch of hassle when i was 12 years old my family literally picked up our modular house and moved to state line mississippi picture the scene a three-bedroom two-bath house on the back of a gigantic trailer already split in half furniture in tow in a u-haul me my parents and my siblings all in two vehicles this gigantic caravan headed to the new property. Now let me tell you a little bit about my family. It was my mother, father, and my five other siblings. Again, this is a three bedroom, two bath house. So it was three kids per room. And I want you to understand something. Prior to moving to this specific location, none of us, not one of us, ever was plagued by nightmares or bad dreams. But literally the first night we go to sleep in that house on this new property, I start having nightmares. Nightmares of things coming through the ceilings, through the walls, from the floors. Initially, I thought I was the only one going through this. But I talked to my brother, and he tells me that he's having nightmares as well. And then stuff starts to spiral completely out of control in our household. Example. One night, I'm laying in the bed, and I'm having this nightmare. And in this nightmare, there's this skinny, humanoid monster long fingernails long toenails pale white and emaciated with this thin layer of skin head flipped upside down mouth wide open long sharp teeth like needles eyes that glow purple and flash red this is a dream that i'm having or so i thought this thing is climbing on the ceiling in the bedroom looking down at my brothers and looking down at me you know how it is when you're in a dream and you realize that you're dreaming so you try to wake yourself up well, that's what I do. I realize that I'm dreaming. I'm literally laying there saying to myself, this has got to be a dream. And when I wake up and open my eyes, scanning the room, I don't see anything. But this unsettling feeling is in the air. And what I mean by unsettling is this. It's cold. My body's tingling. And when I look over at my brother, his body is shivering because it's so cold in the room. For the next 15 minutes, I can't go back to sleep. I feel like I'm being watched. So I reach over, shake Trevor, wake him up, only to learn that he's having the exact same dream that I'm having. Again, remember, it's three of us in this room. We start to shake my other brother, Troy, but he won't wake up for nothing. Then the two of us hear this scratching sound coming in the hallway, literally like rats scratching on, literally, literally, it literally sounds like a gigantic rat scratching on the floor. And next thing you know, I see that upside down head poking 
through the doorway at the very top and those eyes flashing purple and red, purple and red. Trevor screams at the top of his lungs, falls off his bed to the floor. Now I'm on the floor next to him and the two of us are freaking out. And again, I want to be clear with you, neither one of us are asleep at this point in time. We're both wide awake. Imagine a scene of two of us laying flat on the floor right next to each other, too afraid to peek up over the edge of the bed. And then you hear that same tick, 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 ticking sound moving away from the bedroom door. Listen to me, neither one of us had the courage to leave the room that night and go to our parents' room and tell them what happened. But the following morning, we tell my father what we experienced and he didn't believe us. Four days later, my older sister, who's 16, going on 17 years old, comes home from a date, and we hear her hauling ass, flying into the front door, slamming it behind her, and you can literally hear her hands shaking as she tried to turn the locks on the doors. Listen, the entire family floods to the foyer. Some of us coming from the living room, others coming from upstairs, others coming from the kitchen, others coming from the dining room, only to find her standing there with her back against the door, looking as if looking as if she had just seen someone murdered. My sister goes on to describe seeing the exact same thing that me and my brother saw. But understand, we never ever told her about this. Now, at this point in time, I think my parents started taking this a little bit more seriously because I would find that my dad would stay up later than normal, kind of sitting in the living room, working his way around the house. He would go to bed about two, three o'clock in the morning. Listen, one morning about 5 a.m., the entire house is awoken to the sounds of gunshots. And I'm not talking about gunshots in the distance. We're talking about gunshots literally right outside our back door and my father screaming, I don't know what the fuck you are, but you're going to stay the fuck away from my house and you damn sure not coming nowhere near my kids. Boom! He shoots again. Run, motherfucker. Boom! Run, motherfucker. Boom! My brothers and I peeking out of the bedroom window, he is literally standing in the middle of our backyard, firing into the woods. And our room having the best view of the backyard is flooded with everyone else. My mom, my sisters, my brothers, we're all there peering through the window at my father having a conniption fit. He moves closer to the woods and starts shooting up in the tree saying, I see you motherfucker, boom! I see you motherfucker, boom! Now listen to me, most kids don't understand the lengths to which their parents are prepared to go to protect them. But that morning, I realized two things about my dad. Number one, that he was fearless. Because I know for a fact that he had to be shooting at what we saw. And what I saw was so frightening that there was no way in hell that I could have ever mustered the courage to shoot or to even talk to it. Because that's how frightening it was. But dad, oh no, some kind of switch had flipped in his head and he didn't give a damn because he stayed out there shooting and shooting and shooting then he came back inside sat down and ate a bowl of cereal imagine a scene everybody's in the kitchen the sun is just coming up all of us children are completely silent because we don't even know what to say the only person talking is my mother and she says honey what in the world were you doing why were you outside shooting and that's when my dad finally tells us what was going on. He says, there's some kind of creature or monster. I don't know what the fuck you want to call it, but it's been entering our house through the chimney at night. <clears throat> this was the second time I saw it. And I'm guaranteeing you guys that this will be the last time that it comes here ever again. Sure enough, I swear to you, that was the last time we ever saw it. I can't tell you if he killed it, if he scared it, but whatever he did, it never came back around again. 